Hello everyone, welcome back to Call It Beto. Super excited to be here back again with you guys with another video. And in today's video, we are going to learn how to use sliders with React Native. This video is going to be perfect for beginners or for medium level developers that want to learn how to use sliders properly in their application or just have an idea of what you can do with a slider. And here we have an example of what we're going to be doing. It's just a basic to do application. Uh, that I took from an example of the Expo Router repository. So if you want to check it out, you can go to the Expo Router repository on GitHub and download this application uh, as an example. So they have it there for free. You can grab it there. And just, uh, I wanted to show you the functionality of this slider that, that we have here. And as you can see, this is what we're gonna be doing. Just uh, grab, using this slider, installing it, and then changing the UI values depending on the value of this slider. Uh, we're going to learn how to handle the input and output of this slider. Um, and yeah, so this is going to be a fairly easy tutorial, guys. Now, before we start, uh, I want to mention that if you want to become a master in React Native, go to codebeto.dev and check out the React Native course. I'm thrilled to announce that the course is being translated to English and we are almost done. So in the next you know, 30 days, maybe it's going to be available completely in English. So maybe at the time that you are watching this video, this course, it's available on English. And in this course, we learn how to create a real world chat application. And this application is just the final project of the course. As you can see here, we have all the sections, uh, the sections, and we also have a lesson as an example. So you make sure that go check it out for free. And yeah, so now that this is out of the way, uh, let's start guys with this video. Okay guys, so here we have our application. Um, as you can see, it's a very basic to-do application. Uh, by the way, I took this application from an example of Expo Router. So if you want to play with the uh, original code of this application, you can check it out the uh, Expo Router uh, repository. And then if you go to their examples, you're gonna find this application. So I took it for this tutorial uh, and I want to, see how I can integrate a slider, right? So if you are, uh, you know, new to React Native, you may be tempted to just try to use a slider uh, like you would do in other native frameworks, like like uh, SwiftUI or uh, Android, right? So I'm gonna say here, um, just a slider. And as you can see, nothing happens. And let's see what, it's going on here. So if I come here to the React Native um, section, uh, you can see that if I try to import slider, slider has been removed from React Native core. So now it can be installed using um, React Native community slider. So to do that, let's just delete this. And now we need to add a dependency to our repository. So let's go to the um, React Native um, slider page and um, let's select this one. So this is going to be the, re the replacement for the dependency that we need to install. So I'm using yarn. I'm going to just copy this command and go back to my code here. I'm going to open my terminal. I'm using Expo, by the way. Uh, so I'm going to run this command and then npx expo start to start the server and I can reload the application. So if we wait a little bit, now when we create a to-do, we go to this uh, screen and I'm going to now try to use a slider. This time is going to be from uh, the library that we just installed and here we have it. So we are importing slider from here and here we have something, right? So nothing has happened. And I believe because uh, slider has some properties that we need to specify. So I'm going to copy this example that we have on their official documentation. And as you can see here, we have um, many properties that we can specify to use this slider. For example, with height. And I can say here width, which is going to take the entire width that we have available. And as soon as we start dragging, this is working just like that. Now, uh, just for the sake of the simplicity of this example, I'm gonna say with multiplied by 0.9, we're 
which at the end of the day, it's almost the entire screen, uh, just a little less, right? Now, uh, these colors, I don't really like them. So let's change them. So minimum tracking in color. Let's change this to be blue, just so we can see what's that. And then we can change this to be red. All right, so the part that is already slided, slided uh, it's blue, and the remaining part is going to be red. Now, every time that we are changing this value, uh, we should be doing something, right? So let me just change the colors. Okay, so now I have guys uh, provided these colors that to me look better. Now, I'm creating a to-do app, right? So I want to ask the user to provide how important or the priority of this to-do app. And here we have this low, medium, and high, which was my inspiration to integrate this feature with a slider. So how can we update the UI and everything else when we are dragging this slide? So as you can see here, we, are, we have a minimum value and a maximum value. And also we also have this height, but if we change this height, I don't think it's going to change too much. Just it's like the container of the slider. But this minimum value between zero and one can be, uh, it's a value that is going to be changing between the slider being all the way to the left and the slider being all the way to the right. Now, let's create a variable so we can see uh, what's going on in the background when we slide this um, slider. So up here, I'm gonna say const slider, I don't know, state and set slider state. I'm gonna be using for this react uh, user state. And as you may guess by now, this is going to be a number. So maybe we can type this like, number like this and the initial value is going to be zero so if i now try to go back here and add a this value here so the value is going to be the slider value um slider state all right now we also want to change this um value when we are dragging right because if I try to drag now, okay, it's letting me do that. And um, so I'm gonna say on value change, and I'm, I'm guessing that this is going to return the value. So we can grab this value and set it to the slider state. So I'm gonna say set slider state equal to five. All right, so this value, it's going to be a number as you can see here. That's why we are not getting any error because we said that this slider, uh, this variable is going to be a number. Now I, I need to see what's going on right under under the hood here. So I'm going to have a text that is going to print my slider. So if we open curly braces and then we say slider state and hit save, as you can see there we have a zero and just uh, so we can see it, let me change the font size to be maybe 32 and on weight false. All right, so there we have it. Now let's try to change this. Okay, so something a uh, little crazy happens because we have a lot of numbers after the point. And the important thing here, guys, is that the, main, the first number is going to be 0 0.4 and then 0 0.5, 0 0.6, all the way until we get to the one. This is how we can play with these values. Now, uh, just, to have this a little bit, I don't know, um, more readable, human readable, we can change this text that we have here. And maybe we can, I don't know, like say, I'm guessing to string. Ah, and this is going to be here, to string. And then maybe we can say to, I don't know, just like that. And then maybe we can say slide, slice from uh, zero to two. Okay. So, okay. So this is going to be three. Okay. Now it's better. So we can use this value to play with the, um, what's the name with the priority of this task. Okay. Now let's say that we want to show an emoji depending on, on the priority. Okay. So give me one second, I'm going to grab a couple of emojis and I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, so I know what um, emojis I'm gonna be using. So I'm going to save them here 
as a constant variable. So I'm going to say const emojis, and then I'm going to save this in an array. Uh, so the first one is going to be the green circle. So it's down here. So this is going to be just for a simple task that is not really important. Then we have a yellow circle. Uh, I believe it's this one. And finally, we can have a red circle to emphasize that this is important, right? Now, the, um, the one that we're going to be grabbing is going to be the one at the position zero at the beginning. So we can show the emoji here, depending on that. And I believe this is going to be, uh, this is going to look right on top of the slider. So I'm going to copy this and, and paste the array of emojis at the position zero. But now we want to change this every time the user uh, it's sliding, right? So let me change this to be, I don't know, 64. So we can see better. Uh, now um, this is going to be static, right? But we can validate this here. So we can create a function that does this for us. Um, and maybe this function can return the index of the emoji that we are going to be rendering. So if this function is going to return the index, maybe we can write it here um, and let's call it helper, helper emoji. Now this function is going to need access to the current value of this slider. So we can pass it here or we can grab it from here because this function is inside this component. But if you want to abstract this function to have your code more modular, more maintainable, uh, let's do it passing the parameter. So I'm going to say um, slider value, and I'm going to declare the type for this. So this is going to be a number. And then we also need access to, well, because this is just a simple uh, to do app that is going to have just three elements in the array. We know that we, we are going to have just three, but if you want to change that dynamically, let's add the array. So I'm gonna say emojis array. Now this emojis array is going to be an array of strings at the end of the day. So I'm gonna say string like this and, and the bracket. So uh, TypeScript knows that this is an array of strings. Now we need to grab the number of emojis. So let's put it here, number of emojis. It's going to be equal to the emojis array dot length, right? Now uh, we have the length here. Finally, we can, you know, depending on the length, return um, the slider value. So I can just simply graph the slider value and have like three if statements or switch case. So let's say switch depending on the slider value. And we are going to have some cases here. So the first one is going to be um, add a break here. So the first one is going to be when the slider state it's um, less than, let's say 0.3. So I think I need to grab this. Okay, so what's wrong here? It's not compatible to type number. Okay, maybe we can have this in an if statement. So I'm going to say if slider is less than um, pointer, just return. In this case, it's going to be, well, we need to divide, right? <laughs> the number of emojis, uh, depending on the value. So let's just keep it simple for now. I don't want to, you know, confuse you. So we know that we have just three emojis. So at this point, I'm going to return the index zero. Um, else if the slider is greater than 0.3 and the slider state it's less than point, so it's going to be 0.6. This means that we need to return the index at the position one. And finally, we need to return the position two because we know that uh, we only have these cases. So if I hit save now, um, we are 
return x side of f function. Yeah, so I have an extra curly braces here. Uh, yeah, so we can use this helper uh, emoji. Instead of passing here this zero, we can call this function and then pass the slider state. So this is going to return a number. Now, um, as you can see here, this, this looks a little bit um, complicated because we are calling this function. But at the end of the day, if you pay attention, this function is returning a number between zero and three, which are the index of the array. Now, if we try to change this to be three, you're going to see that it changes to be yellow. And if I keep dragging all the way to six now, okay, so here we have a bug. And the reason for that is because we are returning um, 2 and 0, 1, 2. So what's wrong here? So I'm putting this else here. We are returning 2. Maybe I need to say if slide state is greater than 0 0.6. So it's going to be two. Hmm. All right. So we are seeing that the value it's oh, okay. 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 So I don't know if this has to do something with this, but let's change it. I was using, I wasn't using this slider value that I was passing here. Now, uh, what's wrong here? Okay, guys, as you can see, I don't know how to program. I was missing the return keyword, so I don't need this extra logic. So I can just have this else. And now I added this uh, return. So this is working as expected. Okay, guys, and this is the functionality that we have. And just before I finish this video, I want to tell you guys that we have um, some cool properties that we can specify with this slider. For example, one of the coolest one is going to be the step. So if I do step, this means that the slider is going to have like steps between. So, so what I'm saying is that it's not to be as smooth as this. So if I change the step, for example, to be 33, and this has to be a value between zero and one, by the way, notice that when I drag, nothing is going to happen for a little bit until I get to the 0.3 value. And because now at this point, we only have three, uh, three values, we can play with this. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's going to be one. But we have this um, little like bug here. So maybe you can change this to be 34 or 35. So let's change this. Now it's working. Yeah, so you can use these steps if you only want to have uh, a certain amount of elements in the array. And another property that I want to mention is that you have events, for example, on uh, on slice, on sliding start. So as soon as the user starts dragging, you can do something. So do something. And when you end, when the user ends, maybe you can show any something else, or you can also play with these minimum and maximum values depending on the functionality that you need. But yeah, guys, this is basically how you can use the sliders with React Native. That's all I wanted to show you. This was a quick tutorial. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments.